Because we switched rooms. Oh my gosh, I forgot that's triangle. Because Sayaka was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. Yeah. So why would you ask me to switch rooms if you wouldn't do the beginning? Yeah. Sorry, that was a little weird. Even if it's even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of switching? Knowing what she'd been through, I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone. True. So. What if her being scared was a lie? And there's the rub. Huh? Well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? Because. I know you don't want to consider it. But look at this and tell me, can you still deny the possibility? What in the world is that? There's something I want to talk to you about. Check the name plate to make to make sure you don't get to the wrong room. I okay. found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. And these are the words that appear. What is some nice, oh, that's man. nice leaf. I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. When you write, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. Yeah, it's pretty cool. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap. I'd better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. Yeah. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique. But even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. Yeah. Oh, and I should also mention... I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Mm. Huh? Which means only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Which wouldn't be me. Then either it was Makoto oh. who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. So, Makoto, did you write this? Yes, you I know, wrote that and I signed didn't. it as Sayaka. Well, of course you didn't, because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's signature. Oh fucking shit. So why'd you even fucking ask if I wrote it, you dumb bitch? But, but why? Okay, I'm sorry, why I should, she I should really calm down the during like these swearing her way of so. getting in touch with a certain someone. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. You're right. If you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation, what young man could resist? <laughs> Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. Sure. But can we be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Oh, why do you think huh? that? What makes you say that? Yeah. Would, would you like to hear what I have to say? No fucking duh. Very well then. Pay attention. Alrighty. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? Makoto? Yes. In the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically said, my room. I see. Uh huh. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Right. Exactly. The room that Makoto was in. Balls! No, it's wrong. The nameplates on my and Sayaka's rooms got switched. Right. They got switched? Yeah, if you That's actually did right. some investigation, you guys probably would have figured that like out. The rooms instead of pointing your fingers at me. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. And the nameplate That's on Makoto's why the note room says specifically, Sayaka. look at the nameplates, now look at what you're staying in. The room Sayaka Thing. was staying in was actually marked as her room. Then, yes. if someone did do what the note said, they yeah. would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Mm -hmm. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other, so switching the nameplates would be no problem. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Nope. Right? Okay, then who did it? Are you freaking? We wanted to go switch the nameplates. 
The only other person knew they had switch room. It of course. It's Sayaka. I got it. So. Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. Oh, so the me. only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her note. Yes. So they want to talk to you about just us two in five minutes. Come see me in my room. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? She specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. Right. But why would she switch them in the first place? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. Yeah. What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. Right. That's where the answer lies. This is where we'll find the truth. Was probably whoever she invited over came in and attacked her. We figured it out. We know who did it. Whoever she invited over is the culprit. But we still don't yeah. know who it is, you goddamn idiot. Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps True. the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? <laughs> that reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Oh yeah. Probably. What's the deal with that sword? Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. Yeah. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. Mm-hmm. How the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? Oh, you just look at it. This wrist was broken with the fake sword is because... When you look at her wrist, there's no doubt. I got it. So yeah. All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. Excuse me. Right there, where her wrist is all swollen, there's something glittery there. See? Is is that gold? Solid gold. It sure is. Specifically, it's solid the gold, gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. Yeah, what a pain. And there's some on her wrist because... It struck her she wrist. Because she got hit with the sword right there on her wrist. Yes. I see, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. All right, then it's about time to solve this mystery. Is it, though? Yeah, we'll see. Bit more okay. Are you getting used to these non stop debates? Kind of. But every time. Starting with the next debate, I'll, st I'll start loading multiple truth bullets into your truth cylinder. But just like with the weak points, only one of those bullets can actually refute the proper statement. There we go. Here we go. In other words, from here on out, you'll have to combine the right truth bullets with the right, right weak spots to refute each statement. If you come up with a wrong combination, you'll think down here. <laughs> Press the L button to rotate the cylinder and choose which bullet to fire. Press and release the L button to cycle through each bullet. Or you can hold down the L button and then use the left stick to select a specific bullet. By the way, the logic difficulty is set to kind. Fewer bullets will be loaded into the cylinder. For our purposes this time, the logical difficulty will be set to mean. Thanks, game. Well then, good luck and have fun. All right, now this is where the real game starts, right here. All righty, replica sword, seat, replica sword, and the kitchen knife set. Only one of these things is right. When the fighting broke out, 
the culprit grabbed the sword. And that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack. Yeah, no. No, it's wrong. I mean, I probably should listen through them all and then point them out, but since the trial has become really, no. really long. I don't think the fight started with the sword. Like right now I'm at 44 minutes. Why not? Because the and sword I probably will split this scratched. depending on how long the trial goes, so... See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp? You mean like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. Okay. If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you are going to attack with the sword, you'd take it out of the sheath first, right? Right. That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. Mm -hmm. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? True. Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. Yeah. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere. Then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. So she grabbed the sword to defend herself. But then the culprit took that from her, too. Then, after they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and finished it. Sorry, but I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. Yeah, she didn't. What? How the hell can you not think that? Because she never because held the sword at all. The wrist. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. Oh, not her wrist. Um, 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 um. Well, if you touched it, it'll be your palms. I got it. Your palms will be not gold. Her palms, right? The palms of her hands were perfectly clean, so I don't think she ever picked up the sword. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Like I said before, because there's no the gold, gold coating, coating on that sword on comes it. right like off. All you have to about. do is touch it. In fact. If you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. Oh, wow, this music is yeah, a little it's weird, but it's cool. It's good music. That's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their mm -hmm. hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. No way, no Maybe way. She washed her hands after she escaped into the bathroom. Why? Sorry, but I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? Yes, but that's no, not the reason. That's not it at all. Well, let's see here. It happened after midnight. And there's a specific rule. It talks about what happens in the bathroom. That water was off. According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at nighttime. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at nighttime. Which right? is weird, but hey, it's convenient. Actually, I haven't taken a shower. Duh. My. You're no different. You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey. Can we get back on topic, mm -hmm. please? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. Topic. An insult, obviously. So anyway, if Thank you, Taka. The sword, then that means... The killer is the only one who used the sword. Right. But hold on. If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen knife was... It was... Sayaka. Sayaka? She had the kitchen knife? But yes, We already said did. that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. Impromptu. And the one who attacked impromptu is first the best kind was... of comedy. Sayaka? Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. Nope. 
Oh, as a matter of fact, she's the one that planned to kill someone. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation, indeed, these are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Makoto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Maybe yes. the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that she could pin the crime on you. That is a possibility, is it not? Yeah. So yeah. Sayaka wanted to on me? Yeah. That would also explain why she would switch the nameplates. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. Makoto. But for that to work, I like how she says Makoto. Lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. Yes. So all that's why she switched the names? But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. You're probably I'm sure right. Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Yeah. Was, you are being played like a fucking damn fiddle. A totally forgettable kid. Or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Wait, then you're saying she had this all planned out? Yeah. Holy shit. Oh. But in the end, her plan backfired. Yeah, fuck her. She stupid launched bitch. her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. Yep. That's so she kind of pretty sucked up. Broken, Attacking and someone. she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she planned to murder. Just hold on. That can't be true. Why? Because, because hey, hey, you guys have totally derailed the argument. You're no, we being haven't. super boring right now. Come on, hurry up and decide who did. If you want to set aside right now. Awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time. Wait, oh, there's a time yeah. limit? We gotta decide who we think did it. Uh. Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. If we can't yeah, all right. murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I'm committed to finding out who killed her, but what can I do? I mean, so as far as clues go, there's nothing left. <laughs> Wrong! I'm gonna have to fire this at my own message. So I think you actually have to do that at some point. Hey, look, we only get one. That's because we're on. Uh, I forgot how many difficulties It's easy are. just to say, hey, decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? False. No, that's wrong. The gain message. That's the big there still might be one clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Dying? Wait, wh what did you say? Dying. The dying message. Not she wrote dining. something on the wall behind her. I think you said her. dying. It looked Remember? like dying. One one zero three seven. Written in her own I really book. wonder what this there actually looks like, though. In there. Seriously, Again, anyone with a one. brain can I figure it ask, out. Can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? Are you stupid? I her got finger. It. Her left index finger had blood on it. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Sure. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? One, one, zero, three, seven? Hey, Chihiro. You're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. 
Yeah, but she, he, no, that's she, not... she doesn't. Yes, I'm a programmer, Sorry, but I don't see forgot. any kind of meaning in these numbers. Of course. It's because they're not numbers. No. Nope. Oh, yeah, it looks like... Huh? What? What? No, it's just... I'll look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Don't these first two, one one, look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Oh, Especially right. if you see that little. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was one one. But looking at yeah. it now, you could also read it as an N. Whoa! You might have finally just said something worth a shit. <laughs> yeah, his yeah, my little gray cells are really getting excited now. But even if that really is an N, N037, doesn't make any more sense than before. Well, look at the numbers as if they weren't numbers. Rotate the image 180 degrees. There you go. Just rotate it and... Oh my god. Now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. Huh? Yep. You just shot past the clue part and right onto who did it. So, whose name did she write? Are you all idiots? Turn her message 180 degrees. It should become crystal clear. And now we decide who did it, which is you, Leon Kawada. The key to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 degrees. And yet we you dilly dally. Around, oh well, you need some action and drama. It becomes the letters L E O N. L E O N. L E O N. Leon. L E O N. What the hell are you talking about? It, it's just a coincidence. It's just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. Uh huh. No, it's not How random at all. How coincidental! Why would she write your name? She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally, and had to write upside down, as it were. And as a result, when you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. Yep. That, that sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? Mm-hmm. The evidence that <clears throat> Leon tried to get rid of. The only thing I found down for the incinerator was... I got A burnt piece of shirt. You mean... The burnt shirt piece I found laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? Yeah. As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. Right. But one piece burned off, and no, we're almost on this trial. And the killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? But is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. Right. That, that's right! There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. But there's one... With just that one little charred difference. piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. Yeah, I think so. Right. Her remains a button up shirt which the killer wasn't able to get rid of. 
it was how it was disposed oh, of. If you look closely at how the shirt was disposed of, we should be able to figure out who the killer is. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're going to say. Oh? You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on, either. Hmm? You'd need the key to get in. And the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? Okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Uh, no, that's not really right. There's something that was also at the scene that made it seem like eh, I kind of been so I did that. Yeah, yeah. I think if I maybe I should have gone on a higher difficulty, but yeah, fine. The key to the trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? Right. So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? Yes. And you'd have to get close to the incinerator in order to destroy the... No. No, it's wrong. Not really. Considering there was something broken at the... <laughs> Hold on. I think I know how someone could dispose of the evidence without using the trash room key. But if you can't get past the gate, you couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator, could you? No, there's yes, you one could. possible way this. to do it. What is it? Some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but, uh... But how would you use it? Well... How would you do something like that? You'd throw oh, it! God! The killer simply took aim at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that excuse switch, me. and the incinerator would come to life. Oh, jeez, excuse me again. Through that, through a gap in the gate. Remember what you said before, he threw me. Huh? Someone turned the incinerator on. Very strange. I'm quite certain it was out for the last time we were down here. Okay. Perhaps it's what's so together. Hey. Kumi had the key. So the only way the incinerator could have been turned you know, on without the Okay, I'm going to do a little spoiler here. I love how the, the cold clean do things brought up in here. But the then it's never brought up again. Once they got in the incinerator, ever. Going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Hey, come on! What the hell is this? All you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. Right. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire. Fire! If the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken care of much more thoroughly. Right again. Wait, wait, no, just hold <clears> on. <throat> Excuse but me. the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least 30 feet, right? Right. The pinpoint accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small. Could someone really do that? Someone could. That, that's right. There's no way. It'd be impossible. No, Difficult. not really. Absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so. Because the killer is... It won't be... It'd be the what? <clears throat> would be a problem for the ultimate baseball star? Because the killer is the ultimate baseball star, isn't that right, Leon? Leon? Do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? Ah, uh, not really, because it's pretty feet away solid. Would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. Right? You, you, you can't be serious. I, I, I'm not the killer. These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong, I'm Whoa. telling you! You still won't admit it? Okay, then. Okay. Makoto, go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. Okay. And with that, we can end this. Got it. Listen to me! 
What the hell do you mean, end this? We're ending this. Say what you want, Leon. But all the questions have been answered. And the truth has been revealed. Because we now, reached what out. Happened. We pulled out. We rooted. The closing argument is about to begin. Sure. Every case has one last element to bring the class trial to an end. This is the closing argument. In this phase, you will be completely you will give a complete summary of the case. You have to reduce reproduce the flow of the events of the case in the form of a comic book. However, you'll notice that in the comic there are a number of pieces missing. It's up to the com up to you to complete the, the comic using the provided truth panels. Also, if you aim at a missing section and press the X button, holy cow, you'll get a hint that might lead to a breakthrough. Unless you have never paid attention. Well then, good luck and have fun. Unless you did not pay attention, then you would have been 